Yeah, 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 what it is, what it do, what it look like, baby, it's your boy Swift back up in the mix with another episode of this Boss Heavy shit, and you already know. We about to do it the Boss Heavy way. Yeah. Another day, another dollar. Hey, if you're a creative right now, you're trying to make lemons lemonade, man, I feel you. If you're trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B within your business, I feel you. I'm not going to portray myself as the expert, but I'm going to be the helping hand to actually walk you through this process while I go through it myself. As a creative, being a business person or being somebody that's like business savvy is not your strong point. You're, You're basically the one that actually like takes ideas and takes concepts and brings them to life. So with that being said, man, like, I felt like creating this podcast and creating an outlet for creatives to actually like find a medium where they have somebody that's actually just like them. That's don't get me wrong. Very, very aware of the value that I provide. I'm very, very aware of like how to actually like structure out contracts and proposals and different deals and so forth and so on. But that's not my strong point. That's not what I wake up in the morning and thrive to do right so it's like coming out with different ways to communicate coming out with different ways to actually put my ideas out there into the world has been a blessing so this podcast is for you if you are the mom the dad it's seven o'clock in the morning right now and i'm recording this podcast before my son gets up to go to school like this is the the quiet time before the storm of the day starts to hit you in the face in about 20 minutes you, you know the kids are gonna start getting up gonna have to start brushing teeth picking out clothes making breakfast getting them ready for the day meanwhile your wife is also gonna have to eat breakfast <clears throat> get ready for her activities and the things that she's going to have to do for the day and that you got to structure out what are the most profit producing activities that you can actually do within your 24 hours to bring not only new clients to the business but also create dope things stay in your creative zen the worst thing you could do as a creative is get so caught up in the paperwork and the actual proposals and all the different things that go into actually running a business and then lose the whole creative side of it. Now, all of a sudden, you're not even yourself. You're not even feeling like yourself. You can look at me right now and see behind me, it's nothing but artwork. It's nothing but paintings that my kids and I have sat around and just felt like, look, this was a way to express. This was a way for us to actually do something that was creative and kind of inclusive within our whole like little quarantine hustle, I guess you want to call it. Back during 2020 and 2021 when everybody was locked in the house and everybody couldn't move anywhere and all the, the whole world shut down, we were in here creating. And being in that creative space as an entrepreneur is very, very important. But it's also important if you know that you're not the most business savvy person to put somebody in place. Or at least have somebody of aid to holler at and be like, look, bro, this is what's going on with me. This is this is how the, the situation has been unfolding. I need to structure this out the right way so that I could position myself to be able to actually like scale this business. Now look, I came on here today and I had a hot, uh, a couple different things that I wanted to go over. But as you um, get into this podcast space, you realize that like a lot of times. <clears throat> Especially in the beginning phases like we are now, you gotta actually talk about what's on your heart. And um, one thing that's been on my heart heavy lately is the price of success, man. The price 
of success, what do you really think it really costs? Cutting this camera on right now and actually recording this podcast is a way for me to air out my thoughts, put out a product on the internet that could actually like help the next person that's going through the same struggles or the same situation but also it comes with a cost now a lot of times people glorify the celebrity lifestyle of being able to afford anything you want running around and being the most popular person you want a, a gazillion followers everybody wants all the followers Everybody wants all the social status until it gets to a point where you're out with your daughter and you really can't even sit down without somebody asking you a question or interrupting your day. Or until you actually like feel as though you can't go to the grocery store because just making it out of normal situations is hard now that you have such a facial recognition amongst the world. Listen, bro. Everybody wants that thing until that thing hits them smack in the face and I've seen it happen firsthand where you know you say that you want this thing you, you aim this to get this status or you say that you want a certain amount of followers you want a certain amount of influence but then when it actually comes it it almost feels like it's too much. Going to the airport out of the country and people are actually like recognizing your face. So everything comes with a cost. Everything comes with a price. Everything comes with a sacrifice. Whether it's time with your family, whether it's maneuvering around the schedule just like I am now. Like I told y'all, man, like it's 7 o'clock in the morning, 6.45 in the morning. I got up, put the camera on and said, look, let me go ahead and make this 20, 30 minute, 45 minute podcast. Express myself, tell my story to the world and do this before my day starts and see if I can edit it down and get it out there to Buzzsprout or get it out there to the podcast distributors before 12 o'clock today so that I can get on about my day find a workflow that actually like is you know more beneficial to you find something that can actually like make you more optimal and tired of your actual day now there is no blueprint for how life is going to hit you in the face you might have to record your podcast on your phone one day just do the audio version because look man Everything's been going crazy today, but I knew I was going to get this in. And I was going to actually, like, stand on the business of what I said I was going to do. Or you can let life throw you around and just become, like, a victim to how things go. Now, I've been fortunate to be around some influential people in the last couple years here that actually have shown me the blueprint of not only how to put together a plan of action but actually be a wolf when it comes down to executing the thing is I know that hopping in front of this lens is going to come with a price (laughs) and uh, my peace, my sanity, me being able to move around the way that I want to and lock in with the folks that I lock in with has been a blessing but if something happens to me tomorrow my son will never be able to look back and be like yo, my dad was dope that boy was look he was doing it the boss heavy way hey I'm telling y'all right now I watched one of my childhood friends pass away shout out to Felipe man and going to his funeral brought a lot of things into perspective for me like a lot of a lot going to that funeral in the last couple weeks here man is is like it made me realize not only how precious life is but how quick your time could come and we're all at that age now where any day any year any moment could be your day if you live to see 
40 years on this earth, man. It's almost a blessing. It's a blessing for me to even be able to still speak into this microphone knowing how many of my partners are not here right now. Shout out to Mike Jackson. Shout out to Donnell. Shout out to Light Skin Chris. Shout out to Francis. <laughs> shout out to Felipe, man. Shout out to York. Shout out to all the dudes, bro, that actually came up with me in some way, shape, or form, or fashion, played ball with me, whatever, and didn't make it to see 2024. But I'm going to tell y'all, man, when it comes down to moving forward in life and you get to this age where you got to make some decisions that's going to benefit you, and you actually got to be very, very, very intentional on how you spend your time. Your time is the last and most valuable asset that you have left. So as a creative man, the goal is to maximize your time or maximize the dollar amount that's associated with your time. A lot of times you might be like, man, yo, these dudes doing videos for a hundred dollars. You're doing a little like, you know, Mashups for one hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollars. I don't really know. I don't really know how I'm about to go about doing this. I don't really know if I'm gonna come out here and really just charge them a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars. Or, but you gotta realize, like, listen, bro. There's a price for everything. Nobody goes to the Louis store. Nobody goes to the mall and go picks out some J's and tells the the person at the counter that they only have such and such they know the price they hurry up and buy now I heard a dope concept to watching uh, the future with Christo and uh, stumbled upon an interview where they were talking about assessing clients before you take clients on and I feel like this is very important. This is kind of one of those things that's been missing within my business as well. So this is not just you. This is something that I'm going through right now today. It's finding the best ways to not only weed out tire kickers or people that are just on your website and just basically want to get on the phone with you before they could do all that, before anything takes place where you have a long-winded conversation with somebody. There needs to be some type of commitment, some type of formal action that's put in place. The comparison that was used that um, was brilliant that I believe when I heard it, it was like it made so much sense. It was like if you went to the doctor today and you had a broken arm doctor wouldn't just take you back to the back and just write you a prescription for antibiotics and send you on your way it's actually like a whole process that has to take place for him to actually assess you come in you have this this arm that's hurting he says okay before we do anything else I have to give you x-rays way it was explained in the video shout out to future shout out to Chris though shout out to them boys man it was like he was basically saying like when somebody comes into your business and actually comes especially in a creative space when you're actually talking about being their creative doctor that's almost the way that you need to look at this whole business when you have a camera when you have photography when you do videography when you do any of those things you got to be a creative doctor somebody that can actually take the idealism from somebody else and be like okay that's what you want to do bet all right not only are we going to shoot it here but we need to have these shots this this the shot list that we possibly need to put together so that if we get these shots we can compile this type of video to show the people this so in order to do that I can't just have you come into the business and have a one size fits all brand package now going through my packaging and my pricing 
there is generalistic things that I will have in place just to have some type of structure in place for events or uh, birthday shoots or that type of thing. Yes. You want to be specific about what your offerings are and how you're going to deliver them. So for me, I coin myself as the brand architect and I tell people all the time, like, all right, you can get a basic or generic package that features, let's say, five photos or ten edited photos and two reels. But when we actually sit down and we want to actually build a commercial or something that's going to take your business and take your visibility to the next level, we need to actually understand your client's pain points at a different level and find the most creative way to actually like meet them right where they are. The intersection from information and transformation has been the most vital piece of success that I've actually like experienced within the last year. The good part about video is that you can actually make people feel something. I could tell you anything right now. I could look into this camera and say a bunch of words that don't even make sense and it's going to draw some type of emotion out of you. But it's a whole different thing when somebody could look at a video and not only feel your message but visualize themselves in that situation. Visualize exactly the benefit or exactly what it is that it is that you have to like show their ideal client. <laughs> this has been the key. And um when I talk about being a creative doctor, the biggest antidote or for success that you could give any client is being a person that can show the transformation of the product instead of highlighting the information or the highlights of the features of the product. Don't tell me how dope this shampoo is. Show me how much volume it's going to give my hair after I shampoo my hair and come up out the tub and do this and do that or whatever. Like, Give me the highlighted benefits but show it in an exaggerated way everybody remembers things in threes <clears throat> so in creating this content the blueprint that you know was valuable to us was creating three of everything now I believe it was Aristotle that said this it was like men always remember everything in the state of three and if you think about it in the content space the holy grail of the content creation space is your hook your story and your offer shout out to Russell Brunson shout out to Click Funnels shout out to uh, Myron and all them boys that's been talking about this for years this is the general basic some people call it so many different things. It could be your hook, your story, your offer. It can be your uh, your hook, your story, your call to action. There's so many different, you know, abbreviations and words that people use to describe this thing. But when you when you're actually in the mix of creating this content for your client and you're making sure that uh, you know they're trying to hit the pain points of their ideal customer you want to record three hooks three stories and three different offers now a lot of people do more four or five I'm not just saying that three is like the end all be all number either but what I am saying is that if you have to have a multiple sets of each one so let's say i have three different hooks a hook is something like uh 95 percent of businesses fail within the first five years (laughs) 
Let our team create the content that'll take your business to the next level to survive. In 2024, the creative economy is said to be one of the biggest booms in U.S. history. Let my team be the one to take your art or take your vision to the next level. Tap them below. Hit one of these icons or call this number. And let's hop on the Zoom call and do it the boss heavy way. Let's go. Now I done gave you some stats. Some background on my team. Let's come in and do our thing. So from a so on, the call to action was to hop on the Zoom. Don't overcomplicate anything. Just make three hooks. Three different stories three different offers now this is where it gets good the reason I use the word story is because the art of storytelling is the kryptonite to anybody that is objective if you have a great story it throws out a lot of objections your story is gonna basically Build some type of cohesiveness between you and that person that's watching you that probably wouldn't even have bought anything that you had to sell. But because your story was so much like theirs, now all of a sudden, y'all best bros. I gotta lock in with this dude. Matter of fact, (laughs) wild story, man, was um, running into the boy Runway Billionaire for the first time. I believe it was 2021 2022 we went to invest fest man i saw a runway and invest fest was in the second year this is when you were able to actually walk up to the front of the stage and just stand on like the side of it and runway was out there and i looked at runway and i was like bro the first thing i said to him was like man your ads make me stop scrolling a hundred percent of the time dog Like, I've never seen somebody, like, do so many different ads with blow-up dolls and balloons and all types of shit. Like, bro, like, you a wild dude. He just started laughing. And he was like, man, look, man, I got, I started off with the camera, too. Had a couple businesses, tattoos, so forth and so on. He was like, man, but you don't understand. His exact words to me was, you have more power than you even understand when all these balloons deflate when all these chairs are put up when all these people leave the only thing that's going to be left is what's on your camera you have to understand the power and the ability to freeze time or capture time and give your story back to the world that was one of the most powerful moments in my journey because at that per- at that time I realized no matter how big the influencer is no matter how many followers they got no matter what part of the world they've been or who they've spoken on stage with they need that camera and they need somebody that can operate it well they actually need somebody that can actually take the footage and do the things that you do with it Now, everybody got to start somewhere, and doing it the boss heavy way, I do not recommend ever slaving or putting your products or your services out there for free. There's this one exception though, especially for all my guys that's listening to this and all my creators that's listening to this, that uh, don't have a mirrorless camera don't have a big boy camera and you're recording everything on your iPhone that is the sweetest time in your journey matter of fact before I even get into this I remember recording on my iPhone and pulling up to venues and putting a DSLR camera matter of fact I used to I used to actually walk up and just have this DSLR camera that didn't really record uh, 
just didn't record video that well. But I used to pull up with my iPhone, put this around my neck, and pull up to churches as big as the church of Glen Arden and shoot videos at the spot with the iPhone 8 and just hope that he wasn't asking me why I wasn't shooting with this camera. I would take a couple pictures here and there with this, with this lens, whatever. But for the most part, when I was out there in the beginning stages of it, I used to pull, pull up and shoot videos, everything with the phone. But if you're somebody that has a phone and you want a mirrorless camera, you actually want to take your videos to the next level. There's a tactic that can be used if you have somebody that you can run with that believes in the vision that you have for your business. Now, it's called a retainer swap. Everybody knows the average for retainer for social media management can range from anywhere from, I say, a thousand to five thousand dollars usually on the high end if you have a client that's interested in using your services but they want your capability they actually want the things that you can provide creatively for their business you can say all right for a 90-day period three months i will work for your company And instead of the actual retainer, buy $6,000 worth of equipment. The actual retainer is $10,000, but you can, we can swap it out. Where I will work, we'll complete the projects that need to be completed within these first three months. You buy the camera and that will be your payout. After those three months, you can maintain the retainer for two thousand, a thousand, whatever it may be. However, you want to actually like structure it out. Structure out your retainer for twenty five hundred, two thousand, five thousand, whatever it may be, and you continue on. And most retainers, my uh, with my experience, shouldn't range. For more than 90 to 180 days without some type of check-in. Some clients might be in a different space. Some clients might not even be inclined to even shoot content throughout a certain part of the year. So when structuring out your retainers and structuring out the things that you want to put together for your your paperwork and for your clients, you want to basically have a structure where all right, for these 90 days, these are the things that we want to accomplish. For these 90 days, these are the things that we want to accomplish. It's not like a blanket retainer where it's like, all right, it's just going on for time. And, you know, this part of the year is not as busy as that part of the year or that whatever. Structure it out where it's beneficial to both parties to actually, like, go hard for that time frame. So 90 days is always good because it gives you enough time to actually like build up enough content and enough data to find out what works if you're posting like I said everything is in the power of three so if you're posting three times a day and you're posting a YouTube video three times a week and you're actually engaged with your audience and you're actually putting out offers by the 90 day mark consistently doing that for 12 weeks you're gonna have enough data to figure some things out at that point you can double down on what was working present it to your client and say all right moving forward for the next 90 days i feel like these are the things that we should do these are the things that we should actually like harp on these are the offers that are coming up all right it's back to school it's is you know this holiday that holiday each month gives you some type of like day off or some type of holiday that you can use to your advantage within your creative space if you know what you're doing um like mother's day is coming up we 
got the good old Memorial Day. We got uh, 4th of July, first day of summer. So many different little, like, trinkets of days that you can use and structure out offers around those days. Just like Marlowe Furniture, just like any furniture store, any commercial that you see on TV today. It's not just a guest thing. They know that on President's Day, a lot of people are going to be home from work. So guess what? We're going to have a President's Day sale. We're going to have a such and such sale. So you want to not always be in a sale mode, but always be in a mode of present. Like this is what's going on right now. So this is the offer that I have for these this next 30 days. Um, when creating content, man, I always say that be human. Always be human, be yourself. A lot of times we look around and we see corporations, big corporations with the big budgets and the big cameras and the big everything are trying to almost find a way to shoot ads with their cell phones and be more humanized while the little guy, the small business owner, the, the, the human that has a couple thousand followers is trying to record content like a big corporation. Take advantage of where you are in your journey. And that's what I'm doing now. It's like, I'm not coming off as an expert in anything. I'm not coming off as the know-all, be-all in anything. This is my journey. So y'all are going to be able to take on not only the information that I'm giving you, but also just watch the evolution. Watch the, the, yeah, the evolution of Boss Heavy. I feel like throughout the last couple of years, man, I've come a long way with not only understanding how to move like a wolf amongst big dogs, but also figuring out how to communicate, how to actually like tell my story the right way. I came up in an environment that wasn't the best for, let's say, the, the guy with the camera. You were not welcome in the environments that I grew up in. If you had a camera, if you was always trying to take selfies, and you were not in those those rooms. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine, man, trying to pull out a camera in some of the rooms that I was in. And uh, not to glorify anything, but back then, before everything was marijuana and all the stuff was legal. It's like, man, you there's no way that you could actually be in the rooms and be in the round of the people that we was with and have a camera. So coming into the pandemic and coming into this creative space, I still I don't know, it's like I'm I'm still not the selfie guy. I'm not one shoving the camera in my face every five minutes trying to capture the moment but what I realize is that is the essence of time the more time that you can freeze and capture the more moments that your family will be able to remember you from when you're gone um being a creative I said it comes with a price tag it comes with it comes with a lot of pros too but the biggest thing that I've been seeing lately is that in this marketing or this creative space a lot of the money will get funny let's just talk about it so People are starting to do things that they're not really comfortable doing. My advice to you is to just put together an offer that you know you can crush. Take your offer and do the simple things well. 
be a problem solver and be the solution that your clients need to actually tell their story. <clears throat> In the process of doing all this, man, the only advice I can give to you that's been beneficial to me is to bet on yourself. Bet on yourself and don't even really worry about what anybody else think about it. Set up your Patreon, bro. Put together a way for people to link up with you and tap in with you. Matter of fact, if you already know, man, it's BossHeavy.com. Book a call, man. Holler at me on the calendar. You know what's going on. Tap in with your boy. And it's like, man. <clears throat> bet on yourself, bro. Throughout the journey, you gotta be okay. Like, this right here is like, I'm okay, but not having everything mapped out. I'm, I'm okay. You know what I mean? I'm not having the, I don't know, the, the best mic or the best software whatever all I know is that we about to do it the boss heavy way straight like that you know what I mean we about to just do it the way that I know how to do it and becoming the best version of yourself always brings off a certain vibration your vibration is, is, is different when you become the best version of you so I'm like, man, look. <clears throat> Kill the limited beliefs. Don't even think about what you can't do. Think about what you can do and do it better. I'm going to say that again. Don't ever think about what you can't do. Just think about what you can do and do it better. Do it the balls every way. Sometimes, man, when you're actually out here and you're looking for high-end clients, you got to become the client that you want to attract. This is a fact. You have to become the client that you want to attract. So don't tell me that you have a $5,000 offer if you never bought a $5,000 package. Don't do that. You almost internally are setting yourself up for failure because internally you're going to feel bad. You're not going to be at, at peace with who you are internally when you actually start doing things of that nature. You got to be the client that you want to attract. So, if you have high-end offers, if you've been in high-end masterminds, if you've been around high-end individuals, if you've been in rooms that has warranted you to pull out your purse or pull out your pocketbook or pull your wallet out and actually swipe your card for a significant amount of money, now I think that you're mentally in a position to actually like sell something that's expensive. Now, boss heavy. <clears throat> Checked off a lot of those boxes. We've invested a lot of money over the last couple years. Been around a couple guys that's invested alongside myself and now it's like, even with those investments, even with traveling and seeing these different places and doing these different things, it's like graduation season. If you're charging 250, charge 500. If you're charging 500, charge 1,000. If you're charging 1,000, get a 2,000 or $3,000 package under your belt. Get a $5,000 package under your belt. Be able to offer people something more and, and greater than what you have now always look to level up your packaging and your services to be a better service to your ideal client so I'm always looking for different ways to create an edge different ways to actually position offers so that clients could get more of a return on investment on whatever it is that we do so man <clears throat> 
this was just me, man, giving y'all some sauce <clears throat> from the entrepreneur side, from the side of, you know, you know, you definitely got to do the proposals, the paperwork. You got to be in position to take on these clients and you might even need a team. Matter of fact, eventually everybody needs a team, but you need somebody that can actually like facilitate somebody that can get the rebound, somebody that can actually shoot. <clears throat> and um and putting together your team and putting together the things that you want to do. Be very thorough in thinking through how this is going to benefit the person that you're giving it to. I've been fortunate to see some dope offers and see some not so cool offers. But it's more than just setting up a funnel or landing page. It's more than setting up just an email list. It's more than just setting up everything that you do should be intentional. So, I told y'all already, man. This is the boss heavy way. It's your boy Swift. My son is definitely about to get up and go to school. <laughs> This is just round two, man, of me giving y'all the sauce, giving y'all some flavor. If, if you are a creative entrepreneur and you're going through any of these adverse times or if you're going through a situation where it's it's tough to see the light, book a call. You can hop on, man. We can talk about it. I'm actually about to open up my lines to all the creatives that's out there, man. Hop on BossHeavy.com. Book a call, grab your 30 minute consultation. Uh, if it's up, if it's still there, it's, it's free for right now. I don't know when you're going to be hearing this podcast, but if it's up right now, if it's still on my website, you can still hit me. And it'll be a 30 minute little situation. We can chop it up. I can give you some insight on what I feel like would be the best move, make your next move your best move type situation. But I'm also in the process of figuring out some things in my business myself. So we can work together, man. We are work in progress. Putting together the LinkedIn, putting together all the different little things that are going to basically like make sure that the business looks like what it's supposed to look like is the process. Next time, if you hop on here, man, we want to talk about setting up a pixel, setting up something that could actually be used to track the people that actually come to your websites and your landing pages. And uh, even though it's a simple thing, a lot of people overlook the data. So, I want to hold y'all, man. I appreciate y'all if you are actually still here listening to this podcast and you're still here listening to the sound of my voice, man. I lay to the to the ends of the earth. If you know what I know, man, do that thing the boss heavy way, man. Stay true to you. Do what you do. It's your boy Swift, man. We about here. Easy. Boss heavy way.